Your attack angle is one of the most important fitting variables. Today we're going to explain how to improve it, what it means, and how it influences a fitting. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell and Jackie Johnson. We're both master club fitters at Second Swing. Jackie, today we're going to be talking about attack angle and how it really influences a fitting. Yeah, it's really important and you know attack angle on different types of clubs is also very different so what you want with an iron versus a driver those are all different variables that we take a look at and how we can help improve that and you know today we're going to be talking about how it does influence the fitting and how it can influence the numbers so yeah let's first talk about wedges so wedges when we're looking at attack angle is a great way to for us to figure out the amount of bounce the golfer should be playing on their wedges Let's face it, if we're doing a fitting inside, we're not going to see a lot of turf interaction. We're going to hear it on the mat. Mm -hmm. But if we're taking a look at that attack angle number, we can tell if someone's more of a picker or more of a digger. Yeah, I think with wedges, obviously you're going to have a steeper attack angle, right? More of a negative attack angle uh, for the most part. And so, because you want to get that ball up in the air, right? And you want to be able to create spin. So that's a huge, you know, attack angle is huge when it comes to the wedges and making sure that we're getting down on that ball. Yeah, of all the golf clubs, your wedge, it's going to have the steepest attack angle. A lot of it comes down to that ball position. The ball position is not as far forward as the rest of your clubs. So it's basically kind of like right in the middle of your stance, which forces you to hit down on it. So speaking of wedges, so when we're talking about attack angle, if someone has a really steep attack angle, generally speaking, they need a little more bounce. Bounce mm -hmm. is your friend, bounce is forgiving. If you have a shallower attack angle, you probably don't need as much bounce on your wedges. Right. Okay, moving on to uh, seven iron. Seven iron, that's gonna be kind of right in the, in the middle, so you're not gonna hit down it as much as a wedge, but at the same time, you're not gonna really hit up on it either because we're still trying to get some turf interaction. Tour average for PGA Tour players is about negative four. So anytime I see an attack angle that's less than that, what's gonna happen, generally speaking, is a player's gonna be more of a picker, they're gonna take less of a divot, but it's going to generally spin less. Yep. Yeah, I would say that Normally in fittings, uh, from what I've seen, a lot of people tend to be about at three or two degrees um, with a negative attack angle. So uh, you don't see a whole lot of like average golfers really like digging down in the ground and creating a lot of turf interaction, so to speak. So in general, a lot of picking more than anything. But yeah, the more that they can hit down on it, a lot of it tends to be that it's too far forward, which is why they're not getting that attack angle to be more negative. Right, and then also club path is a huge influence there too. If you have, if you have golfers that swing left with their club path, so if it, the club path is really out to in, mm -hmm. uh, what's going to happen is that path is going to be left, but also the attack angle is going further down. Yep. So we're going to play around with that a lot today, and we'll see what happens if we swing into out and out to in, and how it influences attack angle. Finally, driver. This is where the money's at, right? Mm -hmm. This is how you pick up distance. So if you want to know how to hit your driver a lot further, this video is perfect for you because if you need to hit the drives further, you've got to hit up on it. Yeah, yeah I, I think with this, this is probably the most important in terms of distance that you're getting from a club, right? So a lot of people tend to hit down on the driver, which just by little, like what, we're going to explain a couple different tips to be able to hit up on it, but Hitting up on the driver is really key to, you know, limiting that spin and creating more distance. And I think a lot of it is ball position, but also, you know, tilting the spine angle. And again, you said club path and, and those things are really important as well as we can hit up on the driver. Um, so I think, yeah, with driver especially, like for a lot of people, it's hard because they're hitting down on everything else in their bag besides that. So. I think this video is going to be really helpful for those that need help with a, a positive attack angle for sure on the driver. Yeah, both Jackie and I are both going to hit some shots with wedges, 7-iron driver, and we're talking about what works for us, how to improve it, and we'll also go to extremes and show probably what we shouldn't do as well. So, Jackie, let's hit some shots. Let's go. Okay, Jackie, we're going to start out with you hitting some 52-degree wedges. When you're setting up to your 52, where do you have your ball position? Um, for me, I like to have it, you know, just a little bit further back than center. Okay. So. So you like hit down on it maybe a little bit more possibly yeah. with uh, with this club. Yep. Okay. Let's do some shots. Okay, that's pretty typical.
Okay, so Jackie, we'll take a look at your attack angle. We'll notice that you don't hit down on it a lot. We'll nope. no notice here about negative two on average. Uh, let me ask you, when you're playing outside, are your divots this size or are they pretty small? Uh, they're pretty small. I, I don't take a huge divot like at all. Even like with my 56 degree, very minimal if anything. So, um, but yeah, I'm more of a sweeper than I am a digger for sure. Okay. So that, I know that much, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> yeah, we can see, yeah. Uh, so when you're, when you're picking it a little bit more, what's gonna happen is the spin rate may be a little lower. Yep. Uh, well, it can launch a little higher because you, you're sweeping a little bit more, but the spin rate usually is going to be lower as opposed to if someone was gonna come in with an attack angle that was say, negative seven, mm -hmm. negative eight, and swing the same way, that, it, that spin rate is going to be more. Right. So I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to hit some shots. I'll hit, I'll hit standard, I'll hit across, and I'll hit into out and see what happens to that spin rate and that path. Okay. Yep, not hitting down it very much. There you go. We're going to be right around the same. Yep. <laughs> better. Yeah. Okay, so I hit three shots myself. Uh, my attack angle, as we notice, is pretty similar to yours. We're about negative, negative two, negative 2.3 is what I think my average was on those three swings. Yeah, so you're at minus 2.3, I'm at minus two. Yep. Yeah, so nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, we're more of a picker. I play a little bit less bounce on my wedges because of, because of that. I'm not taking a, a huge, huge divot. I don't need all that extra help. Yeah, I same. So I'm in the same boat there. Uh, you know, and taking a look at this, I mean, two yards of from carry to total. So it's not like it's you know crazy rolling out or anything like that. But yeah, typically, you know, if you're a little bit steeper, obviously you're going to stop the ball a little bit more. The ball's going to spin more. Um, I, I would say like, I don't think you'd want to. You're attacking. It'll be more positive than what ours are at right there. I mean, right. You, you, you get that, and now you're rolling out four, five, six yards with the wedge, not going to be, not yeah. going to be a good thing. Well, you take a look at our club path. Both of us were swinging slightly into out. I was swinging a little bit more into out than you were. Yep. Um, so I want to play around with this a little bit and see what happens to my attacking if I was to start swinging across it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that was a little bit more down and then the spin rate went up. Yep. There we go. Yeah. yeah, I think this is a great conversation in terms of what we were talking about earlier, like club path in general. And this is why a lot of people, you know, and we'll get into this as we get into the driver and stuff, but why with the driver, so many people hit down on it is because they do have that out to in club path. And so they're more negative. Right. Right. Because that's what it, it I mean, that out to in creates that negative you know, attack angles. So. Let's face it, the higher percentage of golfers slice the ball than hook the ball that come in for a fitting. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 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 So there's a reason why their path is left and their attack angle is down. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, you can see that last shot there. I didn't have to do much more. I didn't swing it really much faster, but I picked up almost 2,000 RPMs of spin yep. because my attack angle was down. The ball was also cutting as well, but my, my path was left. So I actually, my path was negative three mm -hmm. versus before where it was three degrees into out before. Right. There you go. And for me, that's a that's a pretty hard move. That feels like I'm literally doing yeah. this on the on the downswing. Yeah. Swing. And yep. same with me. That's why and like I've really tried to change my swing to be more neutral if not creating more of a draw. So it's very unnatural for me especially with my wedges to like now change that whole movement, it, yep. it feels weird. Even if I am coming more out to in, personally, I don't feel like I am. Whereas if I really were to try to go more out to in, it would feel so weird. So unnatural is what it would feel for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So generally, if you if you fade the ball and you take a bit more of a divot, your attack angle is going to be more down. Yep. Um, going to the other end of the extreme. So I'll try and hit a couple into out here. We'll see what happens. I, I'm going to guess that I could probably actually almost hit up on the ball with a with yep. a wedge by swinging in to out. <laughs> yep. 
Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was 2.8 degrees up with a, with a wedge just by changing my path to be a lot more in the out. Yep. Yeah. And then it's interesting, you notice that spin rate dropped again. Yep. So we went from, I was getting close to 10,000 RPMs, now we're back down to that 8,000 mark. So we can see there's potential there with the longer club, with the yep. driver when the ball is on the tee. If you're hitting this particular um, club, you definitely wouldn't want to try and hit up on it too much because the, the impact spot of where you're trying to get turf interaction with the ball is very, very fine. If you try and hit up on the wedge, there's a good chance you'll hit behind it, yep. and you'll hit it fat, and you, all yeah. of a sudden you'll miss the ball. Which is why, like for myself, why I've gone away from that because of that exact reason. I was when you know years ago, I always felt like I was chunking the ball, chunking the ball. My wedge game wasn't very good, so that's why I changed some of those techniques to try and get away from that to be more consistent in that regard. And, you know, looking at your numbers, I mean, when you go out to in, in to out, right, you'd think with the spin rate, right, and our launch and everything that we wouldn't be able to stop the ball as much, but you actually stop the ball on a dime going in to out versus out to in, which is interesting when you're talking about, you know, spin, just spin in general, but your launch was so much higher with the in to out yeah. than it was with the out to in. Because so, it was helping it, yep. helping it up there. Yep. Yeah. So... Yeah, I think it's just it's it's a good test here to just show like whatever club path you're having with your wedges, just knowing like what it's how it's going to react and what it's doing with your wedge game is it's, that that piece is just important to know what how it's going to react yeah. onto the green. So I think ball position is important. It's probably yeah. the most important thing to get right as long as you have that ball position, you know, middle of your stance, or even you said you just had it slightly back yeah. in the, the stance with the wedge. That's right, where you want, where you want to be. Yeah, I think a lot of people, the mistake they make with their wedges is they put it too far back, and personally. So I see, oh, well, it's a wedge, so it's got to be on my back foot. Well, I, I think some of the best ball strikers out there with their wedges are not putting it all the way far back, especially with, like, a gap wedge area. Like, you still want that to be pretty neutral. Um, the only time you're really moving that really far back are, like, you know, when you're really good with your wedges, 56, 58, 60 degrees, that you might put it farther back uh, to kind of lob it up a little bit better. But, I mean, again, it's, a lot of it is preference depending on if you have a steep attack angle or you're more of a sweeper. Right. You put the ball position back with the wedge, all you're doing is you're decreasing loft. Yeah. So you're turning basically a 56 degree wedge into a 52 degree wedge if you put that ball position back yeah. anyway. Yeah. Why not just play the 52? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to 7-iron. I'm curious to see your numbers with the 7-iron. All right, let's go. Wow, that was good. So that one I tried to, yeah. That one I tried to come, like, create more of a fade, come more out to in, which... <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty Didn't. neutral. You're a pretty yeah. neutral. Yeah, golfer. that was pretty neutral. Jeez. Another one, ball speed wow. over 100. I love it. Those are three good, pretty good swings there. Should do some 7 iron tests today. Or <laughs> okay. All right, so let's take a look at your numbers here. As you mentioned, do some 7 iron tests. Well, we can see your attack angle very, very close to zero. Yeah. So, very, very neutral. If we compare it to your wedge without even changing your, uh, your ball position, we'll notice, well sorry, with changing your ball position a little further forward with the seven iron, you'll notice that now you're hitting up on the ball a little bit more. Yep. Now I'm going to expect to see the same thing with me as well because you have that ball position further forward in your stance. Yeah, again, like I'm more of a sweeper. I don't create a lot of divots, so that's honestly right around where I expected. I thought it'd be more like minus one, but that's doesn't surprise me right there so yeah yeah negative 0 0.3 on average just more of a picker yep. uh, what's going to happen there is you, you're not going to spin the ball a lot yep. so you're able to hit the ball a little bit further as long as you hit the ball high enough your stopping power is still pretty good there i don't have a problem with that at all well yeah. and another reason to bring up why i hit graphite so like so i can generate a little bit more spin hit it a little bit higher too because i know that i'm more of a picker so yeah 
Yeah, I mean, you hit shots like that every single time, I would be, I mean, look at that path, face angle, number. I don't, yeah, that attack angle is great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at my seven iron numbers. I don't think I can beat that. Get one. Negative one. Nice. Another good one. Yep. All right, looks like my, my typical number is 178 carry, which is what I like to do with my seven iron, so I love it. Um, we'll take a look at the attack angle once again. We both know that we are both more of a picker than yep. a digger, negative 1.1. Yeah, I mean, that was picture perfect right there too. So we both had some good seven iron uh, showings there with uh, our numbers. <laughs> right, so we talked about path, how path can influence it when we're hitting the wedge. Mm -hmm. There's other ways that it can influence attack angle too. Wall position, we talked about that a little bit. So what I'm going to do now with the seven irons, I'm going to play around that ball position a little bit. So I'm going to go back in my stance, and I'm going to go forward in my stance and see what happens to the, the attack angle. Okay. That was very low. There we go. So that was minus six. Yep. Good one. Negative five. Negative five. Okay, so if you take a look at the attack angle, we can see quite significant. I probably oh, yeah. hit down on the ball about four or five degrees more than before. Yeah, negative 5.7. My only concern, there's a couple of numbers that that changed there also when I moved that ball position back. Yep. Dynamic loft yep. and club path. Yep. Because my ball position's you know, so far back, yeah. naturally I'm going to present less loft at impact. Yeah. For some people that's a good thing, but at 19, that's too low for that dynamic loft. Yeah. And then club path, when I was my club path went even further into out, I went from neg negative, sorry, I went from 2.5 to 6.4. Yeah. Once again, because my ball position was a little too far back. Yeah. But you get the general idea. If a golfer comes in, have their ball position back, and they're counting <laughs> across it, that's where we get some very, very steep attack angles. Yes. And that's where we get a lot of spin. Yep. yep. Well, and that's where you get, you know, golfers that can't get the ball up in the air, too. So they're struggling to get the ball up in the air, struggling to get spin because, I mean, there's a lot of variables like we've talked about, but a big one can be just simply ball position and plus coming out to in usually is – uh, going to be an issue when talking about contact and talking about results that you're getting from that club. So. Yep. All right. All right. So let's go to the other extreme. Let's move that ball position forward now. That launched. Yep. Oh, yeah. Hitting up on it there. Just getting ready for the driver swings. <laughs> So now, now we've got the other extreme. Yep. And I know this is focusing on attack angle, because we can see now that moving that ball position further forward did move my attack angle up. Yep. But while is that different with that club path and that dynamic loft? It's, well, it's and, crazy. And launch angle is significantly different, right? Yeah. Like, look at that. 24.8 on that forward stance there. Right. My club path now was actually negative. Yeah. And that dynamic loft was 10 degrees higher. Yeah. Yeah. And height, 131 feet in there. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. that, I mean, basically you're hitting now an 8-iron instead of a 7-iron right. because of that, too. Because your, your loft on the club is just, you know. Well, seven. I was getting 8-iron numbers, so it's yeah. going 12 yards shorter yeah. than my 7-iron. My right. right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I think ball position is definitely, like, really important when you're talking, especially when you're talking about irons. Well, every club, but especially with irons. I see a lot of people, whether it's too far forward, too far back, you know, staying away from that middle, which in theory, like those were the, your best numbers for sure, both of ours. So, right. I mean, definitely ball position is really important when it comes to attack angle. 
uh, with any club. So I think that definitely showed that here uh, with our experiment. All right, well now we've got drivers to hit. Now we can combine bull position, correct bull position, and correct path. We should be able to hit some bombs. All right. Well, that was a good one. Uh, close the face a little bit there. Oh. Good club path. Yeah, I just, yeah, close it a little Face angle was just slightly closed. Yeah. That was a higher launch angle. Yeah, I was trying to. Like yeah. that. There yeah. we go. That's what I want right there. Great club path, 0, 0.0. OK. You might want to delete that. I one. mean, uh, that's oh. not that bad. That was a pretty good miss. <laughs> Gear effect oh. helped you out on that a little bit. That's, yeah. oh, I'll, let's keep it. We'll keep it. <laughs> um, I would say, like, that's definitely something to touch on. Like, for me, what I've been working on is, you know, obviously getting my, increasing my attack angle. When we first started filming, you know, a year ago or so, like, my attack angle was more like, I don't know, around two, three, somewhere in there. So I've been really trying to increase that, and it's really helped me like be more consistent, definitely with the, driving the ball. So, you know, my miss is going to be off the toe. I I knew I hit it off the toe there. I didn't think it was going to result in that, but that's why that's where I want to miss on the driver, is simply because of that. And that that increase in the attack angle has definitely helped me be able to control the right miss. Right. right and not and stay away from that so yeah so there's there's your shot right there it was clearly on the toe um, a lot of it's going to come down to your improvements here in your path mm -hmm. so when you hit up on the ball your path has got a lot better yep now if you hit down on the ball generally that path is going to be left negative and that's where you start getting some some heel shots yep. or you're hitting in the wrong place on the on the club face right and you know, talk about sky balls we'll yeah a lot of the times when people hit down on with the driver and they tee the ball too high, the only thing they're going to do is, is sky the ball, and that's going to influence some pretty bad misses. Right. Yeah. So attack angle is huge, and you've done a great job here. Your average attack angle on those three swings was 5.2 degrees up. Those club path numbers are pretty good. No doubt that you hit some great shots there. Yeah. No, that was a, a good driver showing there. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. All right, I'm gonna hit a couple of drives here, and I'm gonna play. I'm gonna try and play around with bull position and path, and see how that influences driver distances. Uh, all right. So when I'm setting up to driver, mm -hmm. bull position I have on my left heel. Yep. So I want to make sure if it's on my if it's on my left heel, it allows my left shoulder to be a little bit higher than my than my right shoulder, and it allows me an impact to then come through and hit up on the ball. Same. Get the ball up yep. in there. That's fine. There we go. Good it's one. a little toey there, but yeah. I'll get away with it. Yep. All right, so the secret is out. <laughs> How I'm able to hit the ball so far is purely that attack angle. Yeah. And I. I'll agree it's probably a little too far up at times. Mm -hmm. We're talking eight degrees. It's pretty far up for the driver. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, but when you're talking about for you, for your, like, in general, for your swing speed, where that's at, right, and what you need to do to be able to compress the ball and lower that spin to gain that distance, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. 8.7 degrees is far up there, but it makes sense in terms of how you can be, you know, at those numbers that you're at. So yeah. it definitely increases that distance for you for sure because I think you, you get to where my attack angle is, I think you're going to lose, you know, five, maybe five, ten yards just from that. No, so. I would, but it's the distance versus dispersion debate yeah. is what it comes down to. Yeah. The further you hit up on the ball, the further you're going to hit the ball. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt about that. Um, this, you watch the long drive guys, they'll, they'll have their attack angle really, really far up when they're hitting, hitting driver. However, sometimes they only need to get one drive in the, in the fairway for right. them. 
Right. So it depends on how straight you are and how good you are at controlling that club pace, club face and club path. Yeah. If you don't hit bull straight and you hit up on the bull, it's going to go pretty far offline. Yeah. That was a lot to do with that spin loft. And if you hit the bull straight and you hit up on it, you can hit the bull seriously far. Yeah. And that's, you know, I was only presenting, what, 111 mile an hour club speed there. Yep. And I was sitting at 316 yards. Yeah. That's, that's my secret there is, is the attack angle and, and what I've worked on a lot over, over time. Yeah, I mean, look at, <laughs> look at these dispersion circles on uh, both of our drivers. They're like identical, just, just obviously Just a little distance. left of center. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, that's for both of us. I know that that's really like what we... I mean, neither of us really hit a, f well, no, we both don't really hit a fade with our driver for sure. So we're trying to hit that draw and, and that was good. I mean, I think, yeah, you go further up in your attack angle, you have those, you know, you miss hit that ball and you don't hit it in the middle of the face, it's going to be all over the place. And I see that a lot too with guys trying to swing at 120 miles an hour. They're increasing their attack angle, they put it way up and it's going a duck hook left all day long. Yeah. And I, that's where you get into that consistency issue. So. Well, the, the guys on the PGA Tour, they know if they increase their attack angle that they can hit the ball further. Yeah. They know they're leaving a little distance on the table. But their average, believe it or not, PGA Tour average is negative one with the driver because it's a little easier to hit straighter. Yep. They sacrifice distance, but depending on the course they're playing or depending on the hole they're playing, then they can definitely play around with that. If it's a wide open hole, a wide open course, of course they're going to hit up on the ball. Well, and I think, but. too, for them, right, when you're talking about hitting off the tee, they're trying to hit different types of shots. They're trying to hit some fades. They're trying to hit, you know, some draws. So it makes sense because if they're trying to hit fades, it's obviously they're going to have a lesser attack angle to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, that doesn't surprise me that their attack angle is that average because of that. So it makes sense. All right. Well, speaking of fades or slices, <laughs> let's, let's play around with this. Let's see if I can see what happens if... I now hit down on the ball. Let's see if I can hit down on the ball first and then cut across it and see what happens to my distances with my driver. Okay, sounds good. So, in to out. So, in to out. I'm going to lower this T height a little lower because I don't want to sky my driver. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to move my ball position a little further back in my stance and I'm going to try and cut across it a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to guess that I'm going to lose some distance. Yeah. I would guess that too. There we go, I'll hit down on it. Yep, minus one. Look at that loss on that carry distance. Yeah, huge. What's interesting, what happened to my launch angle. Yeah. So I'm using the same loft on my driver, and this is where what's really important when we're fitting people with attack angle. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can fit people based on their attack angle and tell them how much loft they need on the driver. Yep. I feel like I ripped that. I did. 0, 0.0 on the attack angle. So I think this one's a good one, actually, because this is why, you know, that was dead straight bullet, right? Yep. And you hit that, you know, 300 yards, right? We'll say that at 0, 0.0. But again, you think about attack angle, like that's really significant when you're talking about like overall distance. I mean, you're losing 15 yards, right. but it's going straight and down the center. Yeah. So I think that's a good indication like why the attack angle for tour pros are what it's at because they get results like that. So mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll say that last swing, I feel like I went after that really hard, but would look at my club speed, it was actually slower than yeah. those when I was hitting up on the ball. And I think it's so much easier if I move that ball position further forward in your stance when you're hitting up on it to generate more club speed. Oh, I well. agree. I mean, and that's why like I made the changes I did because I don't have a ton of distance, right? I mean, it's not bad, but it's definitely not, you know, 300 yards. So for me, I made that change because it did get me a little bit more distance, but I could still control it, right? So it wasn't like crazy, but yeah, yeah I, that's a good, Good test right there, for sure. Yeah. That thing barely got in the air. Yeah, negative 2.2. Again, I feel like I hit that pretty good. But that, that launch angle was crazy. So let's take a look at those numbers. <laughs> let's, let's see what's more ideal here. Look at that, same smash factor. It's so the launch angle dropped by six degrees. Yep. Yeah, so if a golfer came in that was hitting down on it a couple of degrees, they're going to need more loft on their driver to start with. The advantage of hitting up on the ball 
is one, you're going to launch the ball higher, but you can have less loft on your driver to start with. Yep. Less loft on the driver is going to generate more ball speed. Yeah, I mean, that more ball speed is obviously going to equal more distance, right? But this also goes into the conversation with a lot of people that we fit that hit down on the ball. The reason why they struggle with the driver sometimes is because if they don't have enough loft, they can't get it up in the air and they are not able to get any distance at all, right? right. So I think that also brings in the conversation of if you do have a negative attack angle or neutral, that generally speaking, you need a little bit more loft to help you get more distance, especially carry distance, uh, so that you know we can be efficient with that. Uh, but yeah, I think this is yeah crazy numbers, and you actually almost got that tour uh, pro uh, attack angle there, minus one point one. So <laughs> that was good. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that I, I look at the carry distance there. We're talking. 35 yards is yeah. what, what I lost in carry distance. There's no golf course that I'm going to play when the, when the conditions are, are soft that is going to roll out to that distance that we were seeing there. Mm -hmm. um, so carry distance is important because if, it, if it's soft out on the golf course, you want to get your carry distance up with your driver. If you can have a high launch, low spin, high carry, and have it still released out a little bit, that's how you're going to hit the ball far with your driver. And right. attack angle is the key. Right. Yeah, I look at your dispersion here too, right? More center to right with that as well. Well, it makes sense. You're moving the ball further back, right? So the yeah. face is going to be a little bit more, you know, neutral or open maybe, to my maybe path. open. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is a great test. Definitely showcases exactly what, you know, attack angle means, what ball position means, club path, and, yeah, good results for sure. Yeah, and it, it comes back to when we're fitting at second swing, we focus heavily on what a player's attack angle looks like. So we're looking at that number on TrackMan all the time to see what a player's attack angle is. And we're trying our best to get them more distance with their driver without sacrificing the dispersion. And we're trying to fit them optimally with the amount of loft on the driver, making set adjustments, center of gravity adjustments, hosel adjustments to make sure that they're fit for the right, right driver in the hands. When it comes to wedges, same thing. We're, we're working on the right bounce, trying to figure out what bounce that the golfer needs based on how steep that they swing at that club or how shallow they swing at that golf club. Mm -hmm. So golfers, if you need to increase your attack angle or decrease your attack angle, a couple little tips. Play around with ball position. Ball position is going to really influence how the ball launches and how your attack angle is up or down. Uh, club path is also going to influence your attack angle too. So if you need to hit down more, more down on the ball, swing your club path a little bit to the left. If you need to hit more up on the ball, swing your club path a little bit to the right. I hope you enjoyed these tips today.